Welcome back to our class introduction to quantum optics. Today, in the last class before season's ending, before our short break, we want to discuss a very fundamental topic, the quantization of the electromagnetic field. It's a big step for us because it's the first departure from the classical field description that we had, where we could describe the electromagnetic field simply through kind of classical fields that we know from your electrodynamics course. But today we want to take the big step in quantizing this field and introducing operator annotations for the electric field and the vector potential and discuss a little bit the states that are possible of the radiation field in this kind of quantized description. So let's get started. So in the first part, we would like to just remind ourselves of the fundamental idea how this quantization procedure of the electromagnetic field works. And the general idea is the following, that we associate with each radiation field mode one quantum harmonic oscillator. So you have the radiation field modes that we talked about in the last class. They're the modes that are allowed by the boundary conditions. So they're a set of basically K vectors and polarizations, giving us these, for example, plane wave solutions in our box, each of those modes, that's a single mode, each K and alpha kind of component, that's a single mode. And to each of those modes, we attach a quantum harmonic oscillator. And the degree of excitation of this quantum harmonic oscillator, that tells us how many photons are in the system. So in fact, the definition of a photon in this context, context of the quantized field is just one elementary excitation degree of our quantum harmonic oscillator attached to the radiation field mode. So the photon has now a precise meaning, what we mean by a photon. It's the elementary quanta associated with the quantum harmonic oscillator attached to each radiation field mode. So that of course means, for example, we can create and destroy photons through these nice ladder operators that we talked about in the context of the quantum harmonic oscillator. So I can start with a quantum harmonic oscillator with a degree of excitation nk. So this is the kth mode. We have the nth degree of excitation in this kth mode. And now we apply, for example, the destruction operator to this harmonic oscillator associated with the kth mode. And we see we actually, what we do by that, we reduce the photon number by one quanta. So decrease photon number by one photon. And with the creation operator, we can actually do the opposite. We can actually increase the photon number. We increase the degree of excitation of this quantum harmonic oscillator attached to each radiation field mode by one quanta. So this increases the photon number. And by the way, I've dropped the polarization index for the different modes just to keep the notation a little bit more shorthanded uh, in our discussion. So we can also apply the number operator to tell us to what degree is the quantum harmonic oscillator so, uh, excited in this kth mode of our system. So how many photons are in this kth mode of the system? Well, if we apply this number operator associated with the kth mode to the quantum harmonic oscillator state, to an eigenstate of this quantum harmonic oscillator, with an excitation degree of n in this kth mode, well, that will just give us nk times this eigenstate nk. So the number operator tells us how many photons are there in this mode k. And these, these number states, if we are talking about these nk states, they are the so-called Fox states with a precisely defined photon number with a precisely defined degree of excitation in the system. We'll actually discuss in one of the next classes, different kind of field states where you can have superposition states of different photon numbers and they will actually give different results. For example, if we calculate what is the expectation value for the electric field, for the magnetic field over such states, or these simple Fox states, which are just the eigenstates of our quantum harmonic oscillator. So if we want to calculate now the total energy or write down the total Hamiltonian for the radiation field, we know that each radiation field mode has attached to it a quantum harmonic oscillator. So we just have to sum over all those quantum harmonic oscillators to get the total radiation field Hamiltonian. And that's done here. We sum over all the modes K, these individual Hamiltonians, quantum harmonic oscillators of the kth mode. And the quantum harmonic oscillator of the kth mode, we can write in this standard form that we discussed in the context of the quantum mechanical oscillator, 
with the AK and AK dagger operators being the destruction and creation operators. Now, if we compare this quantum version of the quantum harmonic oscillator, the energy stored in the kth mode with the classical energy stored in the kth mode that we also derived in one of the previous classes, we can actually see we can make a simple, simple correspondence between the classical and quantum version. We can actually take the classical version and arrive at the quantum version if we carry out the following procedure, replacement procedure, if we replace the complex coefficients AK by square root of h bar divided by 2 epsilon 0 v omega k multiplied by the destruction operator for destroying a photon in the kth mode and AK star we replace by the same term but with the AK dagger term, the creation operator. So if we plug that in here, if we plug these terms in here, we arrive at the quantum form of the quantum harmonic oscillator of the energy in the kth mode of our system. So this gives us this kind of associating going from the classical version to the quantum version through this replacement operation also guides us in how actually these electric field vector potential operators should be like. We should just do the same replacement procedure starting out with the classical vector potential and then replacing that with these kind of operators AK and AK dagger. So let's do that. So let's take the classical version of the vector potential in the kth mode. We saw those were plane waves with polarizations epsilon k and coefficients AK and AK star. And we carry out this replacement procedure and we arrive at the quantum version of our vector potential, including these AK and AK dagger operators. From that, we can also calculate the quantum version of the electric field operator, for example. So this electric field operator would just be given by the negative of the time derivative of the vector potential operator. And that just gives us this minus omega k term here with the i from the time derivative of the exponential. We arrive at this form and in order to simplify things a bit, we can introduce the following shorthand notation for all these phase factors, not having to write them all the time out, including the i. Remember i is just e to the i pi over 2. And then we can define these phase factors chi k of r comma t and just write down the total electric field operator in a very complex form as a sum of the electric field operators of the different modes. So this is the sum of the electric field operator over the different modes ek. And each mode electric field operator is given by this term where we now introduce these phase factors to make the notation slightly more compact. We can also write this electric field operator as a sum of positive frequency components given by the first term here and a sum of negative frequency components minus of r comma t given by the second term here. So these terms will actually also use in decomposing the field operator and positive and frequ negative frequency components just as we've written down here in this sum. All right. So let's now calculate uh, something else. Let's calculate the Hamiltonian of the radiation field. We said in the classical case, that's just the integral over the energy densities of the electric field energy density and the magnetic field energy density. And we integrate over the volume of our box to calculate the total energy in the system. So we can do formally the same thing. We just now don't use kind of classical fields. We replace our classical field by operators. So now we have the operators E hat and B hat here that we introduced in the last kind of section. Actually, the B hat operator, we didn't derive explicitly, but by just taking the curl of the vector potential operator, you could derive that yourself. So uh, we have the E hat and B hat operators. And if we plug them in, we actually arrive, of course, what else could it be at the quantum harmonic oscillator? So the radiation field Hamiltonian, when we calculate that is just again, sum over the energies in the individual modes given by the quantum harmonic oscillator in each individual mode. And now we can make use again of the commutation relation that AK, uh, AK dagger, sorry. Moment, AK 
ak dagger equals one and we can turn around this term and write it as ak dagger plus one half and we arrive at this standard form of the quantum harmonic oscillator with this just being the number operator for counting the number of photons in the kth mode of my radiation field. So let's now pick a certain state where we assume we have a number of nk1 photons in mode k1, nk2 photons in mode k2, nk3 photons in mode uh, k3 and so forth and we just want to calculate what's the energy of this system uh, being composed of different degrees of excitations of the quantum harmonic oscillators associated with these different radiation field modes. Well, we can just write that down. That's just sum over all the modes, k, h bar, omega k, n k, plus one half, applied to this multimode state, where we have multimode Fox state with n k photons in mode k1, n k2 photons in mode k3, and so forth. And that would just be, of course, h bar omega k1 n k1 plus one half plus h bar omega k2 n k2 plus one half and so forth. So we just the sum over all those degrees of excitation of the quantum harmonic oscillators of the different energies of the different harmonic oscillators attached to the different field modes. Now what about the vacuum state? If you're in the ground state of the system, so this is the state where we have no photons, zero photons in all the modes, no photon in any of the modes. So we can write this formally as tensor product of no photons being in the ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator of all the different modes of our radiation field that are allowed in this box. If we calculate this ground state energy, well, that's actually a sum over all those, those energies, so sum over k, one half h bar omega k, because one half h bar omega k is the ground state energy of each of those radiation field modes, and you actually see that's divergent. So if we sum that up, this gives us a divergent ground state energy of our system. You might be slightly worried, but don't be worried, because when we're going to calculate energy differences between two states, this divergent ground state energy always drops out of the problem and represents no problem in calculating things. And unfortunately, we also can't tap into it, into this infinite energy resource, as we're always just calculating energy differences when we extract energies from the system or put energy into the system. All right, this is the procedure for quantizing the electromagnetic field. Uh, remember again, it's associating a quantum harmonic oscillator with each radiation field mode and the degree of excitation of that quantum harmonic oscillator represents the photon number in that mode. The elementary excitation of the harmonic oscillator, that's what we call a photon. That's the definition of a photon in this quantum optics language. So it's great um, being with you in this first five weeks of the class, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all again in the new year, where we're going to use this a lot this expression for the quantized electromagnetic field, having fun looking at all the new states of light that are possible that we cannot describe with the classical field description that we had used before in the semi-classical light atom interaction picture. So thanks a lot for watching, happy new year, and see you in 2016.